Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, back with another episode of One Take Testing, the show in which I aim to show you a deck, give you a sense of how it plays, and let you know my thoughts all in one singular take. And this is take one, chat. This is the first take. Now, a lot of people have been asking me to reveal my epic plunder list after my absolute schlonging of my locals tournament 4-0 with the brew you're about to see, and I figured I would oblige. Now, keep in mind, there's a little bit of this that is speculative because the cards haven't fully released yet, and they also haven't been shipped to my house, but this is what I would be playing in the upcoming format. God. This is nice, right? The five seconds before I click the word decks and we go into the deck building screen. That moment when you can just feel the budget players watching, waiting for anything to give life to this extremely, prohibitively expensive format. And then, the disappointment. Now, please don't close off the video just yet. I know that this plays three copies of Crossout Designator. I know that many of you would rather pay for your rent than a piece of cardboard, but I promise you, this is one of the first decks that is going to make really effective use of this card. So, Plunder Patrol has always had two main weaknesses. Firstly, it cannot keep cards in its hand. That was resolved by the release of Ravenwing, the Plunder Patrol pilot in Leov. Its second problem was that Ash Blossom completely, are we past the first minute, fucks over the deck. There's nothing you can do if your opponent Ash Blossoms, except cry, scoop, and go to game two. Because all of your monsters draw you a card on resolution of their effect, your opponent can Ash Blossom to prevent you from negating the effects of their monsters, banishing their spells, or banishing their monsters from the field. This does double duty of preventing you from activating any other Plunder Patrol ships over the course of the turn, because usually you only have one plunder in your hand, and you're just going down the chain anyway. Miserably, miserably bad, and resolved by Crossout Designator. So, this is one of the decks that I think will be using it the best, and outside of the Crossouts, the deck functionally builds itself. We've got three copies of Nibiru, three copies of Ash Blossom, three copies of Effect Failure, three copies of Infinite Impermanence, 12 Hand Traps. The minimum amount I feel is necessary for a deck like this that wants to go first but needs your opponent to commit to plays before it can actually get anything going. For Plunders, we're on three White Beard, three Red Beard, three Ravenwing, three Blue Beard, and three Golden Hair. I've seen people cutting individual copies of Blue Beard. I can't imagine doing that. The card is absolutely bonkers and you need names. We We've got three copies of A Pot of Desires, one copy of Called by the Grave, three copies of The Boy, Cross Out Designator. If you draw multiples or you don't need it, always a fine pitch off of Plunder Patrol Shipyard. And finally, three copies of Plunder Patrol Booty. Still a magnificent option if your opponent is playing a horrifying deck like Virtual World that doesn't go into your attributes. In the extra, we've got two lists, two Bran, two Moark, and three Blackbeard, followed by a Bahamut Shark and a Toad, a small Selene combo, just Selene, Access Code, and Halka Fibrax, and Al Mirage for corner cases where the only plunder you draw is Golden Hair, so you normal Golden Hair, link it off an Al Mirage, ditch a Hand Trap, bring back the Golden Hair, and then link away into a Blackbeard to try and get your plays started. So, here's what we're going to do. Hit save on this bad boy jump into EU Central Casual, host a single game with the password R with four R's, and the first person in is going to get a chance to take a bite out of the champ. Oh! Come on! That one doesn't count. And I, I it doesn't count because uh, I, I haven't decided yet. All right, this is our this is the first one we're doing, chat. It's the first one we're doing. Uh okay. Um we're going to normal summon Redbeard here. We are going to go into Al Mirage. We're going to black eyes putting the Redbeard back in hand. We are going to go into Bluebeard. Blackbeard rather. And we are going to set one, two, and pass turn. It's fine. We're fine. Oh, I saw that hand shuffle. Fire off the infip. I know you have it. I'm 
Dragon Ravine. That's okay. I have no problem with that. Pitching a Nibiru. Wow, that's huge. Uh, I'm actually just going to go for the Blackbeard now. Oh, cool. He's resolving. That never happens. Uh, we'll make lists. And we'll draw our card. A Veiler! Wow! How did I get so good at Yu-Gi-Oh? Uh, do I negate the Absa Router Dragon? I don't think so. Go for it. Right, they're getting the Tracer. Whoa! <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> uh, okay, I'm in. Oh, that's crazy. Max effect will negate. <laughs> uh, I'm going to pitch booty here. And it's resolving. <laughs> They must know something I don't. Uh, we are going to add a Plunder Patrol card. Uh, I think I am going to take Shipyard here. <laughs> that was kind of sick. <laughs> Whoa, this deck is everything! What the fuck? <laughs> okay, sure. Indigo Eclipse, Schmoovin. Okay, next up, I'm going to prevent them from summoning another Mech Knight. By resummoning the Blackbeard back to this zone. <laughs> oh, they drew the Boots Sector. Okay, sure. Okay, Boots Sector is fine. For Rocket Tracer, that's fine. Uh, I'm gonna infip here. Or let's Valor. Wow, they are really just playing everything under the sun, huh? For Lina the Light Charmer. Uh, okay, that's fine. Lina bringing back the Veiler, no problem. Oh god, are we getting access coded? No, we're just going to combat. Okay, that's fine. What's up next? Celine? There should be enough. Nope, that's the end of the turn. All right, let's fire off the booty. Uh, we are going to call Dark on my opponent's Lina. And then we are going to summon back from Grave this copy of Blackbeard. We'll draw for turn, stand by main, going for booty again. Uh, I'm going to call dark, targeting the Lina. And uh, then afterwards, I will take a Plunder Patrol monster from the graveyard, this time Ravenwing, special summon that bad boy. And then we will activate the effect of Blackbeard. Targeting himself here. Let's uh, bring out Moark. Uh, I'm going to activate Moark. Uh, we are going to send Whitebeard here, banishing Lina. And we will add a Plunder Patrol spell trap as well. Let's just get another copy of Shipyard. It's completely fine. New Chain will activate the effect of Whitebeard. Skullmeister, the card in hand. We can use List to negate that. Uh, we're going to summon Golden. And this deck can just turn the corner on a dime. From here, we can go into Bran. Uh, we can use Bran's effect. Pitching Redbeard to banish the Boot Sector launch. And then adding a Plunder Patrol monster to hand. Uh, let's get Ravenwing. And then we will uh, trigger Redbeard as well in order to make this Bran just a little bit bigger. Uh, let's, um, activate the Ravenwing, uh, adding the Whitebeard back, specialing itself. We'll normal the Whitebeard. 
we are going to go into the second bran. And then we are going to list. Oh, we don't even have to list. We can just use the effect of a uh, black beard or a uh, black eyes. Okay, and now with the uh, boost effect of Shipyard, we are well over lethal. Alright, uh, mower in. And a pair of brands ought to finish the job. Whew! Oi, oi, oi. This is the epitome of a turn three deck. Well, chat, in my opinion, this deck is absolutely unbeatable. There's not a single archetype that can beat it, save for Ghost Trick, apparently. And I think that it is one of the decks that's going to get the most possible out of Crossout. You saw in the game versus Ghost Trick that our loss felt less like a loss to a lot of really powerful cards our opponent was playing, and more of a loss to specifically infinite impermanence. And any card that's going to decrease the amount of time that your Blackbeard gets infipped or Effect Veilered or Ash Blossomed is going to net you absolutely massive rewards. Crossout Designator is just that card. Um, as always, I would not recommend this deck for new players. If you are looking to get into the game and saw the cool pirate archetype, it is extremely complicated. All these cards have a million pieces of text on them, and they all do different things in extremely subtle different ways. Uh, however, if you are willing to wail and lose a lot of money on a deck that is not necessarily good, but does get to show off the shiny new toy of Big Sword Man who cost $90, this is the archetype for you. I know it's that for me. Folks, remember, do what you want, because a pirate is free.